Ability for envision is also a very valuable tool for Protoss. Now he might lose this Oracle, he's just gonna commit right over the top of the Marines and does actually have it gunned down, which is very unfortunate. Um Envision just to retouch back on that is a fantastic spell to kind of just show Protoss where units are moving across the map and because his Robotech was delayed and is going for Colossus, he lacks vision. He doesn't have observers. He's got one out currently, but it's not enough. Generally, by the 10 minute mark, Protoss want to have at least three. You know something I've seen in some uh, recent professional games? Uh, is using Oracle and Vision in the late game in conjunction with Tempest. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's... Parking behind a mineral line. You can just constant siege the mineral line. There's nothing your opponent can do because Marines cannot reach the Tempest. Beautiful stuff. Now the Colossi is chasing this small group of Marines all the way home. Fortunately for the uh, Terran, uh, he can easily outrun a Colossi, but he is going to lose that factory. Wait a minute, it's just stranded beside a kind of community's factory in the middle of the map, and these stalkers are going to clean it out. So this is going to be very pesky if he wants to continue to make any extra star ports. And if he doesn't have an armory down by now, he's going to find himself in a world of hurt. And oh no. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned actually about this command center. Yeah, he's def he was sending it to the middle of the map as well. Um, now he's taking it to the third where it should be. But uh, that was a little bit risky. Definitely a little bit risky. Now, MVP is kind of switching it up. He's going between Colossus to Observer to Colossus to Observer, and this is the main issue. On such a map, on a wide map like this, and... Does he have a Mothership call? Yeah, he does. Okay, I was yes. going to say, if he didn't have a Momo call, then I I'm I think he's going to find himself in a very interesting position to kind of defend multiple prong drops, but it does look like Stranded now moving down to the right-hand side. Wants to put some pressure onto this third base, but with Colossus in position, I can't imagine too much damage being dealt here, but he's going to lift up, and where is he going to go next? There is no telling, man. This guy sends his uh, buildings everywhere, um, so maybe he's doing the same thing with his drops. Now, it looks like this is going to go right here into this little hidden corner of the main. There's a lot of open space here. Unfortunately, though, he reveals the drop. Uh, he did not do that in Fog of War, so his opponent getting a huge advantage there, but still, he's going to be able to fill off the Templar archives. Oh, he's doing a fantastic job. Look at this. Snipes the Mothership Force, snipes the Twilight Council, snipes the Templar archives. And Randy. now forced to get back, but yeah. does plenty of damage oh, in process. So cute, man. He's going to move the third. Currently, only four stalkers in position. The Bio Force unloads and unleashes a huge payload of uh, basically their entire arsenal over here. This third is basically four fifty. Protoss entire army is now trying to make its way back, leaving his way like, super slow. And that's going to leave that third Nexus dead, man. Remember how I mentioned earlier, super slow Protoss army. Never, never, never a good thing to have so few cannons. Hey, look at this, he has to like now rebuild his entire tech. His 2 2's about to finish, he can't get 3 3 until his Twilight's finished. Third base and the is worst thing running. for him right now is that there's a huge count of Vikings and he has no stalkers. Oh, all too right. Look at that, the Viking count now. He's overextending, this is gonna be it. Dude, this is game right here. These Vikings are gonna just break these stalkers. There's nothing we can do about it. He loses these stalkers, he loses the game. He Even pulling SCBs. It just looks like Stranded wants to end this right now, and Eternal Dreams could be looking at themselves as a 3 1 lead over. But. Man, that is yeah, such, a, such a unique name. Well, a Quetzal is actually a South American uh, parrot. It's brightly colored. Usually they're bright green with red uh, faces and uh, necks. Actually, you could de uh, definitely, after this match, look it up on images.google.com real quick and just show people exactly what a Quetzal is. It's a really cool little bird. I did some research on it uh, when we got the result uh, of the, the, you know, the first match. Uh, Roster. That's right. it's a lot of charge shots here, and they're trying to be slicing and dicing them fire is pushing uh, Stranded back here. It's lost a fair amount of uh, SCBs right now, forces the lift, and MVP is still living to, uh, to breathe another day, but that's what he's going to drop over here at the recently formed third. There is a Templar Archives here as well, so it could be a nice snipe. Maybe behind the mineral line, which is a nice tactic to force out there. Vikings dropping in the main as well. He's gonna pick off uh, probably the cyber core 
uh, or some pylons um, and just targeting things down. Forced to lift off now, but it's causing a lot of harassment potential. And then dropping right on back into the third, uh, who's just going to constant pincer attack uh, at this point. There's no reason not to. Yeah, the Templar are out now, so the only real use they have is feedback until Storm is finished, but we're looking at a hundred seconds delay between that happening. Ghost Academy is underway, a 4cc being constructed, and it does look like Stranded now just kind of powering ahead. What do we have here for MVP? He's trying to basically rebuild his death ball, but he's... He's got a bit of a mountain to climb, to say the least. He's supply blocked Absolutely. right now. He's down to 50 supply. He doesn't have any AoE. It does look like Stranded just kind of remaxing and going for another kind of big push. And... I don't know, the unit count just isn't there for uh, MVP right now. Currently one Colossus, four Templar, a lot of charge lots, but... With some decent yeah. fighting here for the bio. Well, right now, Stranded has three base, eight barracks. They're, basically, he knows that no matter how cost-effective he is or is not, as long as he's killing the Protoss units, he's ahead. Alright, so we got a drop going into the main here while the massive engagement going through the center. Vikings literally have no other targets and this huge Colossus kind of just waltzes into the volleys here. Charge dots activating their charge on a bunch of units as they're stepping away back into the main. What do we have? Deep carrying some pylons picked out the gateway. Some forges here that are living to be unfettered. Three backs go off onto the medibacks. Uh, and Charger's doing some nice damage. He's used his Templar without morphing them into an Archon. Meanwhile, the main engagement going to the center of the map is Archons <laughs> trying to engage the buyer, but there's just too much. The huge completely wiped out. The main still under siege, looking to work down the main nexus. And mm -hmm. Stranded taking a huge damage because now with almost 100 supply up the difference here. Storm goes down and kills what, what, four units? Another storm goes down and some units eat it, but. This just no Pretty time. good storm so far. Great storm there. This is his only chance if he can get the perfect storm. But no, now he's losing the Templar and that will lose the game. I, I don't see a way for him to come back from this, do you? I really don't. It's, it's just too much fire here for Strand. If he's got a big enough lead, his upgrades are ahead. 3-3 three, three is going to finish up. There's the There's GG, the well GG. played. Yeah, he was at half the supply. At that point, you know it's done. Now with a clan war like this with uh you know the the prize on the line i can understand staying in the game but he was dead he was dead i'm not gonna lie to the fans he was dead all right looks like uh, eternal dreamers already knows who they're gonna have next that's gonna be game bomber let's see who quetzal throws out and what map we're gonna have it on i think uh, eternal dreamers might have known they were gonna win that about as long as we did yes. already prepared Stranded playing a fantastic game, so that's kind of like a good way of reading into how to play Terran. Um, I think that fell more down to the tech choices of MVP, it was very mm. odd. Like, his Oracle was delayed, it did zero damage, and then he tried to transition into Robotics Bay and then go for his Twilight with Double Forge on a map where you really need map vision to kind of hold off multiple multiple prong attacks so it's very interesting absolutely now we're just waiting for the maps uh, for these players so yeah um, do you have the ability to pull up a um, picture of a Quetzal for the fans let's take a look I'm uh, taking care of the map stuff. I'll even host it for you. All right. Looks like they want Core Hall. Google Images is a strange place. It also looks like it's related to some kind of dragon. Yeah, that's Quetzalcoatl. It's a uh, South American god. I think it's Incan, but don't quote me. Ah, the bird. Very flashy looking bird. That's very pretty. Let's take a look, mm -hmm. guys. So this is a Quetzal. Indeed, sir. Really nice long tail as well. Interesting. 
and then I'm pulling you in the game now. Oh. But now you know, guys. We're as good. We're as good at dropping knowledge bombs as Bill Nye, the science guy. Alrighty, we got the go-go from both players starting this now. Let's kick it off. We got another ZVP coming for you guys. Looks like it's going to be Game Bomber versus Dark. Is Eternal Dream is going to get even closer to wrapping this up, or is Quetzal going to claw their way back into this best of seven series? Well, I am pulling for the Zerg, which would make it 3-2, that much closer to a tie match. How about you? That would be kind of fantastic, but I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Not being a part of the North American scene, I don't really know who to root for. I'm kind of just looking at player versus player, and so far, Eternal Dreamers is showing us that they just want it more. Indeed, indeed. Maybe it's from all that dreaming. Who knows? Could even be lucid dreaming, for all we know. Anyways, here on the top left-hand side of Corhal Sky Island, it's Wetzel's Zergy McFerguson Dark! And here on the bottom right hand side of that very same wonky bonkers bizarre map, it's our blue Protoss player for the Eternal Dreamers. It's the Bomber of Games, aka Game Bomber. So, this is a really interesting map. I want to talk to you just a little bit about that. Um, it will always be cross spawns. But it's kind of two maps in one, in the sense that your bases are completely laid out differently depending upon where you spawn. Is it top left, bottom right, or bottom left, top right? What's your uh, impression of these two spawning points? I honestly veto this map, and my impression of this is I, I, just, I don't like it. I don't understand it. I look at it like... Who tripped out and made this map in the map editor? Who in Blizzard let this happen? Like, you've got the cooling towers, destructible rocks, things like that, especially on these spawning locations. The main and the natural itself, which is on a higher ground, relatively enclosed areas. So it kind of favors a little bit more, I suppose, air harassment styles or proxy shenanigans. You see mm -hmm. that kind of plays come out. And vice versa, if you were spawn on the other side, of the more natural kind of looking uh, expansions here, the map just plays out so weird, with the thirds kind of being so distant. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really interesting, as opposed to these spawning locations, the third is a lot more relatively closer, you can kind of choke off one side of the map, that's fair enough. You've got these other little destructible pieces that allow your army to wedge in better. So... Mm -hmm. I don't really know what to take of it. I haven't really seen anyone abuse the map the way I feel that it was originally designed to be abused. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we'll see that this game. Who knows? We've got some pretty good scouting going on here uh, by Game Bomber. Of course, Quetzal just completely free to send an Overlord, like, straight cross map, and there's nothing Game Bomber's going to be able to do about it. His Cyber Core just finishing here in the next couple of seconds, um, but it's still going to take a little bit to warp out a Stalker. I do like the decision, actually, to go for the Gateway first, rather than the for any kind of Forge FEs. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you explain that? Oh, I had a quick little yawn there. Body's just waking oh. up that Australian time. Um, I like it because of the multiple attack paths that can go into at least the early stages of this game. Like, you've got a left and you've got a right side to defend with, and it's just too much surface area to kind of choke off with a forge, forge expansion kind of style play. I think the gateway styles on the Shadow, especially those with the fast much and core, and the stalker here to kind of ward off the other and then cancel or break down one of these sides. At least create a choke where this pylon here is doing really nice for game bomb. Likewise. Well, Ashes the StarCraft Kitty has jumped in my lap and decided to say hi to everybody. So hi Ashes. <laughs> hi Ashes. 
you were saying, sir? Just looking at Dark's setup, currently sitting there with the one gas, he's getting speed, going for eight Zerglings. So, mm -hmm. it's not going to be too over the top aggressive, but he definitely wants to get some nice poking damage going on his opponent at least, and maybe, he's, maybe make him feel uncomfortable going into these stages of the game. Game Bomber actually in a very defensive posture here, targeting down this rock tower so that he can only be defend, have to defend one side of his uh, base. And is that a complete wall off? I believe it is. Interesting, interesting. Huh. What do you think might come out of this? We could see like a lot of heavier Stargate players, but we do see three extra gateways going down for sure. So bringing us up to a total of four gateways. He can definitely use pylons on the high ground to warp in on the low ground, but mm -hmm. with this Stalker out in the middle of the field and speed just about to finish, I would imagine Dark's going to clean this up pretty quickly. And he does have a probe in the more northern side of the map, kind of just hiding away there. But if it gets scouted, I would imagine any kind of aggression is just going to get shut down. Yeah. Well, this is kind of the uh, oh no screen. Um, wonder what is happening here. Believe the rules state that we will just do a resume from replay if uh, necessary. Yeah, that's not good at all. The dreaded dreaded waiting for player's screen. I wonder whether or not his computer just kind of shat itself, or whether or not he's just timed out and has some kind of internet problems. Yeah, bear with us guys. Problems should be fixed relatively shortly. Mm -hmm. Alright, let me review the rules just in case I read it wrong earlier. At that point, it didn't seem entirely relevant. I'm double checking that now, though. Oh, never mind, oh, we're still back. here. Alright, the game is going. Alright guys, we're back in it, fantastic. So, no drop has occurred. We do see the pilot now going down at the north, but there's a huge influx of Zerglings. He's currently looking at 38, so he's really cut into his drone production right now, and he really wants to bust him out, but... How is this going to be? Oh, what? Link, that was war. not a complete... Wow. Straight into the main, and I think... That could potentially just be game right there. He's warping in Zealot, but it's not enough. More Zealot than he's basically. him running straight in. He needs to get a block off. But he's used to cut. He's closed, but they're going to get cancelled. Warping in more Zealot. So he's just going to more just kill. That's game. Yeah, there's no way Game Bomber can recover from this, and it does look like uh, Quetzal is looking to bring it back to 3 2, so they're not out of the series entirely at all, and there's the GG from Game Bomber. Wow, Quetzal taking another victory on the back of some incredible aggression. That makes it 3 2, my friend. We were both waiting for it. I, I, I don't know how to feel about that. I looked at it and I'm like, that looks like a pretty solid wall clicked on it, that doesn't look like there's a gap there, but Zerglings really underestimate Zerglings, and have the little tight spaces they can squeeze into now. As a Terran player, I definitely know them feels um, unfortunate for Game Bomber, he was looking to be aggressive, but the huge influx of Zerglings for Dark just kind of seen him take away the win, so... Indeed, sir. Before Dark and Game Bomber, who played? I'm writing down the results for the league. I believe, what did we have? Go to Dem, Dem Replays. We had MVP versus Stranded. Okay. And who took that? Stranded. Stranded. Cool, thank you. Oh, Eternal Dream is telling me that one of their players hasn't showed up. They have another player on, but he wasn't listed, so what happens? Um... Give me one second, I'm reading the rules. It 
if while running the team match, one here, I'll paste it. Who what? Who asked the question? Maestro. Maestro. Oh, oops. Copy and pasted that wrong. Alright, I just sent him the rules. Um, in case people are wondering, if while running the team match, one player of the original roster disconnects or isn't available, captain or coach can pick another one out of roster, but this can only be used three times on league. If there is a fourth time, team will be punished losing that team match. If there is a... Oh, um, three substitutions per team in all regular season. Well, that's not so bad. These guys have thought of everything. How do you, what do you think about that? Love it. <laughs> So we will be continuing on this series. Eternal Dream Makers will be setting up a uh, substitute player. Yeah, I'm just taking all the notes here. Yeah, with the digital rights thing that you were talking about with the stream music, is that for mm -hmm. non... is that only strictly related to pr uh, streams that make a profit? No. Or is that just any kind of material that's being copyrighted any, and you don't... Any kind, of, any kind of material that's copyrighted that you don't have distribution rights to. So, even if... So, like, if I had a Spotify account and I was just playing random music on my stream... Indeed. Oh, if you get... read the spot, yeah. If you read the Spotify um, terms of use, that's actually against their terms of use as well. Well, yeah. When did this happen? Uh, it's happened like six years ago, but they're only just now more aggressively enforcing it. It's crazy. It's actually really, really homosexual. Indeed, sir. I don't. Indeed. I don't like that at all. That's what. Well. The thing is, it's up to Twitch how much to enforce it, but their enforcement policy is if, you know, someone like a record label who are actively out looking for things like this on stream, if they hear one of their songs, they can tell Twitch what time they heard it. Twitch keeps records of all your VODs, whether you delete them or not, and they'll go to the time that you were running your stream that the guy points at, and then you'll get a strike. Three strikes, your account's done. Mm. It's very yeah. interesting and very unfortunate for a lot of us, simply because it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get just the same quality of music to be, I mm -hmm. suppose, presented on your stream unless you know distributors that don't copyright their music and are free to air. Yeah, well, that's um, something I'm working on. You, uh, I don't know uh, how much you read the Clanny Casting Crew chat, but we've been contacting um, musicians and stuff for royalty-free music and getting permission. Uh, yeah, it has to be written permission, by the way, uh, to use their their songs. So that's a database we're actually building up currently. And for anyone that's watching and wants music on their stream, how do you get a written inform well, a written contract over the internet? I'll let you host, by the way. All right, let's have a look. What map are we doing? New Kirk Precinct. What was your question, though? If players want to get royal, like uh, royalty-free kind of music, it needs to be written up in a contract, how do they go about that? Well, you can either kind of contact the musician, but nine times out of ten, if a musician is signed to a label, they themselves don't have the right to give you permission. You have to go to the label. Um, so that's kind of where you're at there, which is why I usually talk to like unsigned artists and that sort of thing YouTube is even more like aggressive with it because they have uh, like basically computers programmed to surf through the audio of all your music or your cast or your videos or whatever and if they recognize something programmed into their algorithm they will go ahead and um mute your entire video. Alright, looks like the players are getting impatient. Uh, have you got that hosted? 
Who are we inviting in? I know it's on Newkirk and Ravage, but it's telling me I need to add Ravage as a friend. I can't invite him to the game. Hold on one sec. Just invite everyone else while he does that. Vino for Quasar, invite to game? What? Yeah, Venino is playing for Quetzal. Alright, we have a likewise problem. Scroll over his name and I can't invite him. Oh no, now he's out of whatever he was in. <coughs> he might have been trying to host the game himself. Ah, beautiful, here we go. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Alright. Oh no, a ZVZ. Have we literally only seen one Terran today? This hurts. <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, you know, Quetzal will take the victory and maybe they'll send out a Terran next. Oh, uh, nobody a... wants to. I would be hoping for something like that. That would be kind of amazing. But I don't think any of the viewers want to see Terran. If there's anyone watching this in chat, please, if you want to see a Terran game, let us know. Because I don't think there's anyone there. I don't think there's a single player here that wants to see Terran. Prove me wrong. We know we want to see Terrans. Come on, guys. Screaming out loud. <laughs> Alrighty, so here we go. This is Newkirk Precinct. Really awesome map. I like the changes they've made from when it was Newkirk District. You still have most of your minerals being uh, located there on the bottom, um, so you don't really see people expanding out to the top too much until the later stages of the game. It can be a very defensive map, but drops are super effective here. Luckily, it's ZVZ. It's not really a matchup. You'll see drops very much. However, um, it is something players can choose to mix in and is very devastating on this map. All right, and without further ado, the first introduction of this match is going to be none other than the Red Zerg for Quetzal. 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 That name escapes me and makes my mind want to do terrible things. Like just bad. All right, it's none other than the Red Zerg, Veno. I'm going to call him Veno. Venino. Venino. Anyways, here what on the bottom left hand is? side, <laughs> they are Latin American, bro. Don't pick on them. <laughs> on the bottom left hand side of Newkirk District, we have our blue Zerg Bomb playing for Eternal Dreamers Ravage. And apparently, the people in chat said, screw Terran, we want Protoss, we want PVZ, that's what's up, represent, dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's terrible, especially on a Terran map, look at this, Terran pride right in the middle, we see the two wolves and the two overlords about to headbutt into each other. Well, we've actually, actually, I think it's going to be a high five, high five, what's up, bro, high five! All right, what's with the wolves? I've always wondered that. Like, there's nothing about wolves in any of the lore. Like, this Terran confederacy were like, yeah, we're going to leave planet Earth. We're not bringing wolves with us. They're going to eat us. Um, there's nothing about, like, rednecks and wolves. I promise you, I'm from the south. I have got no idea. The wolf, oh, this whole wolf thing, maybe it was because of, uh... Oh, what are they called? They were a unit that they bring <gasps> in. And Hold they, on! Hold that thought! Moving. Hold that thought! Pull finishing for both players! We've got Lings coming out! And we'll have wow. Steve just to join it really, really soon here. This is 3-2. So let me explain what's going on here. ETND has a game to play with. It's close, but they are ahead. So it's not too surprising to see them doing some cheese. Quetzal, on the other hand... Oh my god, dude! This is gonna eliminate you! If it doesn't work. But it could work. <laughs> this could be pretty...